Daniel chapter 10, verses 11, 12, and 19. Let me encourage you to continue to witness and invite folks to church. I thought the uh, number we had this morning was good. Amen? Amen. This had a good number, and just uh, that's because some of you have prayed, and some of you have worked, and some of you have invited and witnessed to people. And so I'd encourage you to look around for, first of all, tonight, and if someone's not here, uh, put them on your prayer list, pray for them, call them, check with them, and uh, let them know that the church is thinking of them. All right, Daniel, the 10th chapter, verse 11 and verse 12, and he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Now go down to verse 19. And said, O man greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Let's pray. Our gracious Father, as we bow before you tonight, we praise you. We glorify thy precious name. And Lord, we come to you tonight in need of thy precious Holy Spirit. We pray that thou will just pour out thy spirit upon us and help us, Lord, that we can uh, just rejoice in the Lord, but Lord, help us that we can have the power of the Holy Spirit. For we know the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. And so we pray tonight that you'll just uh, be close to us. And we pray not only for tonight, but every service. And Lord, we just ask you for every person. There are those who are sick. We pray for those on the prayer list. And we hold them up before you. And we, we sincerely want to see them healed and Lord we pray that you'll touch them there are those here tonight that need your touch and need your healing so we pray that you will be with them and touch them and heal them make us fishers of men Lord give us revival and help us to win souls and we'll praise you for that in Jesus name amen I want to preach on the subject needed many little Daniels eight times in the book of Daniel Prayer is mentioned. Prayer is not mentioned in Daniel chapter 2 where we have that great uh, prophetic chapter. But Daniel asked his friends to seek the mercies of God in heaven. And we can be sure that there was much prayer. And so prayer is indicated there that would make nine times. And when Nebuchadnezzar had his dream of the tree in Daniel chapter 4, Daniel was astonished, the scripture says, for one hour. Certainly, I think we can assume again that Daniel spent some of that time, maybe most of that time, in prayer. And that would indicate the tenth time that we have prayer uh, at least indicated. We can assume Daniel spent the night in prayer when he was thrown into the den of lions. I don't know what you'd have been doing, but I would have been praying. And I believe that Daniel spent... A lot of time in prayer, and so prayer is indicated 11 times in the book of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 9, we have a copy uh, of Daniel's prayer. My, what a prayer that is. You know, what a powerful prayer that is. Daniel was a man who loved the Lord, and the Lord had a special love for Daniel. Daniel is one of God's great men in the book of Jeremiah. Daniel's name is mentioned along with that of Job and Noah. In Ezekiel, in uh, chapter 28 and 3, in Daniel chapter 1 and 4, the Bible tells us that Daniel was a man of exceptional wisdom. It was Daniel who decided he would not eat the king of Babylon's meat and drink his wine. But he went to his friends, he went to Hananiah and Mishael and Azariah, and asked them uh, that, uh, to stand with him, and, and they ate pulse, and they drank water. Uh, certainly we can think that there was a lot of prayer that went into those, to, that, to that time when they were doing that. 
Uh, uh, Daniel, I'm sure, packed that time with prayer. Daniel was a man who gave himself to God. He lived a holy life, a dedicated life to the Lord. I believe it was like the Apostle Paul. I believe he had crucified the flesh. And I believe that he had surrendered his whole life to the Lord. I believe it was like Noah, who was a preacher of righteousness. He stood before kings and gave witness and testimony to the reality of God. Daniel lived and breathed. I believe for no other reason than to bring glory to his God. What the church needs today is more Daniels. Now someone may say, well, I can't be a Daniel. Daniel is just, you know, there's just so few people even in the Bible that come up to the level of where Daniel is. And I think that's probably true. But you know, if we can't be a Daniel, we can do the best we can. If we can't completely be a Daniel, we can, we can be a little Daniel. And I think that's what the church needs today. The day is far spent. If I understand time, if I understand prophecy, and I'll preach a little bit about that tonight. The day is far spent. The time is at hand. Brethren, we need to spend our time in prayer. The church of Jesus Christ needs to go to prayer and be on its knees because we need revival. Because we need people saved. And I, I tell you, you, you can go out all you want to and, and, and talk to people and give out tracts. But if the Holy Spirit is not with you, if God doesn't bless it, it's not going to avail anything. And the only way I, can, I know of to get God's blessings on something is to pray it down. First of all, Daniel prayed with knowledge and wisdom. Let me take you back to Daniel chapter 9 and read verses 2 and verse 3. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Daniel was a student of Bible prophecy. He, he knew and understood. The Bible says by reading books, and I, I, don't, I don't think he was reading worldly books about this. I think he was reading the books of God's Word. I think he, he understood prophecy because he studied God's Word. It is so important today, as it has always been, for God's people to understand the Spirit of Jesus Christ is prophecy. And the, you know, the Lord is the only one who knows the future. Listen, God is the only one who can guide us through the future. And it is so important for, for every Christian to study God's word, to know it as best we possibly can. I think, first of all, you need to know the plan of salvation. I preached on that this morning. I preached on it several times because I want you to know what it means to be truly born again. I want you to know what it means to have the Holy Spirit. I want you to know if you're saved. I want you to know what it means to really be close to the Lord. It's important to know those basic things, to know about salvation. But folks, we need to grow. We need to grow and we need to study and we need to understand all that we can with God's help about Bible prophecy. Daniel <clears throat> studied prophecy. In Jeremiah, the 25th chapter, verse 12. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual Desolations. Daniel knew the 70 years was over. Over. He knew that because he read the book of Jeremiah. He might have even heard. Daniel lived at the time of Jeremiah. He might have even heard the great prophet Jeremiah give that prophecy. Think about that, hearing Jeremiah preach. He might have heard him preach on several occasions, but he knew that the 70 years was over. What was he to do? He could have said, oh, well, I can see Bible prophecy is coming to pass. It's going to happen. Everything's going to be all right. We're, we're captives here in Babylon. But God has said the 70 years is over. I know it's over. And our people are going back home. And so everything is all right. I'm just going to lean back and kick my feet up and enjoy life. You know what Daniel did? He prayed and he fasted. 